Hello, vinyl fans. Welcome back to this week's episode where we're going to review a Nitty Gritty record cleaning brush. Nitty Gritty is a company been around for a long time. They make record cleaning machines. We would love to try one someday. But today we're just going to review their brush intended for wet cleaning. They also make a carbon fiber brush for dry cleaning. But we're going to put the padded wet cleaning brush to the test today. One of our viewers recommended it as a good price. It's only a little over 20 bucks and uh, he liked it as a good quality brush. So we'll put it to the test and see. We had to pick a record to clean today. For today's episode, we're going with one from my youth. This is 1979's The Long Run from Eagles. This was one of the first records I bought with my own money. I was 13 years old, had just gotten my first job, a job that produced a paycheck anyway cleaning dishes and bussing tables at a local restaurant in Akron, Ohio. So I was kind of proud to be able to pick this one up. Honestly, I don't think this is Eagle's best record. I would give that to 1975's One of These Nights. It contains that wonderful song, Take It to the Limit, sung by Randy Meisner. His voice was oh, angelic-like, wasn't it? We'll take a closer look here. It is a gatefold album. There's the wonderful Joe Walsh. Everybody likes Joe Walsh, even if you don't like Eagles. And by the way, that is their bassist at the time, Timothy B. Schmidt. This is the first record on which he played. Uh, Randy Meisner had left the band by this time. Also, this was supposed to be the last studio album by Eagles. They broke up after this. They disbanded in 1980. I think there was one live album, and that was it. Well, as we all know now, that was not it. Forty years after that, they were still putting out records. They are kind of the Sam and Diane of the rock world, I think. We notice it, the inner sleeve is the original. This has not been cleaned since 1979. We will put a better quality sleeve in there, I promise you. This record does contain some great songs. You have The Long Run, the, the, the song The Long Run. I Can't Tell You Why, uh, In the City, which Joe Walsh penned and was a song that was featured in the truly awful movie, The Warriors. If you haven't seen it, don't check it out. Also has the number one hit and Grammy award-winning song, Heartache Tonight, which was co-penned by Bob Seger and J.D. Southern. How about that? Pretty cool. And also, I'll mention this, Eagles were known for putting information or statements or little quotes in the run-out groove. On side A, you have never let your monster lie down. On side, uh, that was side A, that was side B, sorry. Yeah, side A, never let your monster lay, lay down. I have no idea what that means. And then on side B, from the Pollock that sailed north. Anybody have any clue what those are supposed to mean? I have no idea. Yeah, comment below. In any case, let's get to it. Let's clean this record. Okay, fellas, as you can see, the nitty gritty brush is actually a padded type brush as opposed to a bristled brush like the Osage. If you've seen episodes in the past when we use a record cleaning machine that's a suction type machine, we like to apply the liquid, be it the record cleaning fluid or the pure water, with a padded type brush. Generally, our go to has been the Prelude from Walker Audio. This is also a padded type brush. We, once it's applied with this sort of brush, we like to agitate the liquid with a bristled brush like the Osage. I think that gets the best of both worlds, padded versus bristled. In fact, one of the things that I want to do before we actually get to cleaning the long run is to try the nitty gritty brush along with the other padded brushes that we have. The aforementioned Walker Audio. This is the Disc Doctor brush, which is our go-to for a manual cleaning process, but will also work on a machine. And the MoFi brush, which actually I've been warming to lately. I'll comment on that when we're giving it a spin on that uh, Randy Newman record that we have teed up here. So let's do that first. We'll just kind of go through the process with the various padded type brushes that we have, make some comments on that, 
then we'll get the album the long run up for a full cleaning front and both sides with pictures of the dirt in the groove before and after and of course we'll listen to it and tell you what we think all right let's get to it let's test out these padded brushes and how they compare to the nitty-gritty Another reason that I was looking forward to utilizing the Nitty Gritty brush, which this is the first time we're going to experience it together, is that our previous go-to, the Walker Audio Prelude brushes, are no longer being manufactured. And that's a shame because I really like the way they apply liquids. One of the unique things about the Walker is that the, the nap uh, within the pad is unidirectional. And that I think that process of having the record move into the nap allows it to get the liquid to get a little deeper into the groove. That's theoretically the case anyway. So let's give it a try. We'll just put some typical record clean fluid on. We'll go with Laurent Dusson and we'll just try the four different kind of pad type brushes that we have and I'll comment on how they feel. Let's start with the one that we know and love, uh, the Walker Prelude. Right away, I can feel how that nap uh, is is coming into the record, or the record is coming into the into the nap. It has a unique feel. I think it's one of the reasons that the Walker brushes work so well. Let's try one that um, I I've not really loved in the past. These are from MoFi, but I tell you, I'm warming to them lately, and I'll show you why. As this comes around, either direction. There's a suction-like quality. It really does seem to adhere nicely. Let's get a little bit more liquid on there. I did pre-clean all of these brushes, but with the MoFi, there is, as I said, a, a real adherence to the record. It's almost, it's almost difficult to keep it steady. It wants to take off with the record. I wasn't crazy about the MoFi the first time I used it, but I'm liking it more and more. Definitely different than the, than the Walker Audio. So this is our favorite brush for a manual cleaning process. It's the Disc Doctor brush. Generally, you would place the record down on a flat, hard surface and manually clean it. And these tiny little bristles do such a good job of adhering to the record, you can literally pick the record up off the table. Really amazing for a manual cleaning process. But it'll work here too. Interestingly, I don't get as much adherence with the Disc Doctor as I do with the MoFi. I think that's one of the reasons that I've been trying and playing with the MoFi lately. It still wants to grab, but not quite as much as the MoFi. Yeah, I like it as an introductory way or an initial way to apply the liquid. But let's try our nitty gritty. Again, I get a little bit more liquid on there. This does not have nearly the adhesive quality, if you will, that the other brushes have. This feels almost like it might be worthy of agitating. Let's give it a try and see if it can agitate the liquid. Now, like most padded brushes, it just doesn't do that good of a job working up suds and bubbles and so forth. Maybe it has to do with the surface area. As you can see, this is a much smaller surface area than something like the wide flat pad that is on the MoFi brush. I tell you what, it feels a lot more like the Prelude. This, however, wants to come into the, yep, there's the difference. The pad is angled this way, going into the record as it comes around. I have to say, I still prefer, at least with an initial impression, I still prefer the Prelude, but unfortunately they're not being made anymore. 
I think this is a reasonable alternative. Not a lot of money. And it's going to have qualities different than any bristled brush like the Osage. Yeah, interesting. Okay, okay. Positive initial reaction. You'll notice too that the top is uh, angled so it doesn't sit on its edge unless it's on something soft it wants to fall over, which is probably not a bad idea. It'll keep the water from uh, collecting into the handle itself. Let's get this album switched out for our album today, The Long Run, and we'll do a thorough cleaning just with the nitty gritty brush and let you know what we think. Okay, we're ready now to clean the long run. Let's make sure the pads on the EPI wand. If you saw our episode last week, we did a review of this Delrin wand. That's what we're going to use today. A lot of great comments about that. Appreciate that, guys. As always, we'll blow off any dust that might have accumulated on the cork mat. Here we go. One thing I'm noticing right off the bat is the nitty gritty brush is a bit longer than most. You're gonna easily cover the entirety of the record side. Be a little careful you don't get it onto the label. As I mentioned before, no pad type brush is gonna agitate the liquid like a bristled brush will with long bristles. We can try. But you'll see nowhere near what an Osange type brush can do. It doesn't mean though it doesn't have its pluses. Every brush has its pluses and minuses. I like the feel of the handle, I will say that. That's about all the agitation you're going to get with a brush like this. going to go ahead and switch to the wand dedicated to water. This has the old style tube on it, the original VPI style tubes, and you might notice that we have replaced the pads with an aftermarket brand, uh, the Disc Doctor pads. We really like this for the pure water rinse. And again, we will use the nitty gritty brush with the water. I kind of like the rounded shape of the brush. I think it allows you to get a few different angles on there that you can't do with a flat surface. One thing I didn't do with the record cleaning fluid, by the way, and just from a best practices perspective, is you always want to focus specifically on the run out groove. This brush makes that easy. Its thin nature is very precise. I, I, I think I like that. And of course, where most of the dirt tends to live, in the intro, the run-in groove. Go the other direction for good measure. Very long brush. I think this is the longest brush we have. Go ahead and take the liquid off the record. Initial 
inspection, it looks like it did the trick. Of course, we'll give it a closer look with the uh, microscope and most importantly with our ears. By the way, one of our subscribers commented that he likes to use a different mat, places over the cork mat temporarily. I'm going to look into that. I think that's an interesting suggestion. But for now, we'll just blow off any accumulated dirt with the Giotto. <laughs> pure water. this to the vinyl inspection station. We'll put the microscope on it and show you what dirt may be left in the groove, if any. And of course, we'll give it a listen and tell you what we think. Let's get to that. Okay, final thoughts and for the record. Our nitty gritty brush, I think, performed admirably. Certainly for a budget oriented brush, it did what it was supposed to do. At just over $20, it is a lot less expensive than any other pad type brush that we have in the studio. I would, however, emphasize this should not be your only brush for use with a suction type machine. You really want to have one pad type brush like the nitty gritty or the prelude that we have often used the MoFi, the, the Disc Doctor, those pad type brushes are great for applying the liquid, but you really want to have an Osage or a VPI, the type of brush that has long bristles on it. That's what you want to use to agitate the liquid once it's been, uh, once it's been applied with the pad type brush. You get the best of both worlds that way. The nitty gritty, of course, is available today. The Prelude, which has always been my go-to brush to apply the liquid, is no longer available, and boy, was it expensive when it was. You couldn't buy just the pad, or just the brushes. You had to buy the whole kit. The Record Clean Fluid, the Enzymatic Formulas, the Pure Water, making it even more expensive still. So, thumbs up to Nitty Gritty for producing a pad-type brush that works admirably. Did it work on our record here? Sure it did, but frankly, this is not the kind of record that I would clean too deeply or get too involved with the processes. It's straight ahead rock and roll. It did it the job that it's supposed to do. Do I recommend this particular album? Well, only so far as I recommend any album that you acquired as a kid with your own money. It's kind of cool to go back and pull those out, give them a fresh clean and give them a, a listen. Kind of a blast from the past. We'll see you at the next record. Mm -hmm. Thank you.